Welcome to drafting unit two, in which we will be talking about annexes. In this unit, you will find out the difference between a normative annex and an informative annex. You will also learn how to correctly refer to them in the body of the standard. So what are annexes for? Annexes are used to separate out information that might not be appropriate in the body of the standard. There are two types of annex, normative and informative. Normative annexes give additional requirements, for instance, a mandatory test method. Informative annexes are used for additional information, for instance, an optional test method, or perhaps rationale pertaining to normative content in the document. All annexes must be cited somewhere in the body of the document other than the table of contents, of course. Otherwise, the user of the standard won't know why they need the annex. When deciding whether an annex is normative or informative, it's not a case of just deciding that the information is important and therefore should be normative. An annex is only normative if it is cited in a normative way somewhere in the body of the document. So how might you cite a normative annex in the document? In this case, subclause 422 contains a requirement which can only be followed by using Annex A to determine the defect tolerance which shall not be exceeded. Annex B is informative because there is no requirement to use it. If the user of this document wants to determine the mass fraction of waxy rice, Annex B gives an example of a suitable method. This means that it's informative. Remember, however, that informative annexes can, in some cases, contain requirements. If the user chooses to apply that annex, then the user must follow the requirements within the annex. For more information on this topic or any aspects of drafting, visit the link given in the course information. Thank you.